Mission Modify, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga program. And I'm sorry, and I apologize, you're not gonna see my hands today. There's gonna be no hands in this video because I'm recording off screen, off my MacBook Pro. Q, why are you recording off your MacBook Pro for an Amiga video? Well, you know what? I've made these videos before. I've made them in the past. And if you go through and look at all of my videos that I've made, you know, you're gonna see an Amiga on Mac and how do I run an Amiga on PC? But today I wanted to make a completely, this is gonna be a long video by the way. So if you're not, if you're not down for a long video, then just skip, go to the next thing, okay? This is gonna be a long one because I'm gonna show you everything involved with minimal editing. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not gonna edit, but minimal editing showing you how to get an Amiga up and running on your Mac. Okay, all right, so the first thing we're gonna do is go to Google. Yes, Google. Well, look, well, actually, you know what? 3.1, that is actually newer than what I have. Okay, well, let's download now. We're gonna download the ARM version. So we're just gonna download, now we're not really concerned about the launcher. The launcher is the cool like arcade interface version. We're gonna download just the standard FS UAE. We're gonna go ahead and minimize that. And then we'll go ahead and fire up this. Isn't Mac great? Look at this, just, just copy it over. Look at that, it's so easy. See, it, it knows I already have it. So it's like, you wanna replace it? Yes, replace it, do it, do it, okay. So now I fire up FSUAE and what's gonna happen? All right, so yes, I do have pre-configurations already installed here, okay? You see these, if you've watched my videos, you've seen these pre-configuration videos. So how would I best do this for you folks? So first thing you're gonna do is go up here, see this little check mark here? You're gonna click on it. See where it says import kickstarts, import Amiga forever. If you purchased Amiga Forever, which will be in the description file, by the way, so please check out the description, support Amiga Forever, they do awesome work. You can import your kickstarts from there. Or if you have them, you know, manually, you can just import them. So as you can see, all these little, look at all these check marks, these green check marks. Obviously I've already imported my kickstarts. So go to browse and you're gonna find your kickstarts. Now, I've already imported all my kickstarts. Like they're all imported. So there's really no reason to do this again, but I'm gonna do it for the sake of this video. And as you can see here, you're now witnessing my whole server, uh, FSUAE kickstarts. Yeah, so here you go. Here's all the kickstarts. Look at all these juicy, yummy, tasty kickstarts. This is not just Kickstarts, by the way. This is like, you know, Picasso, uh, uh, Ham E, DC TV. These are, these are ROM files for so many things. So you need to import those, okay, using one of these two options, okay? Kickstarts or, and so if you do a bigger forever import, it's gonna ask you for the CD. So you're gonna get an image file. If you buy Amiga Forever, and you should, you're gonna get an IMG file. You're gonna browse for that IMG file and you're gonna say import, and it will bring all of these files and it will, it's it's really awesome, it's great, I love it. And then you're done, you've got, you've, you're, you're legal now. So now that you're legal, you can you can have a breath, take a, take a break, relax, you're legal, okay. Now you can create, you can do whatever you want with FSUE here. So what are, what are, you, what are you gonna do, what are you gonna do? Well, this is the default program, so let's go ahead and, Let's quit. I downloaded it, import my Kickstarter. Okay, launch the program. There it is. This is what you're presented with. What are you gonna do? Well, look, it has presets. Do I want an Amiga 1000, Amiga 500, 500 plus, 600, and so on. Right, right, so an Amiga 1200. When you pick Amiga 1200, let's go at 3000. So see here it says 3.1 ROM, watch what happens. I go to Amiga 3000, it, go, it ghosts, it ghosts out. It's letting you know it's gonna do a 3.1 ROM, two megs chip plus eight meg fast. You go back to 1200, it's like boom, 3.1 ROM. So look at this little thing here, it looks like a floppy disk, what is that? Oh wow, well, that's a floppy disk. And as you can see, this is where you can pick to what you wanna boot with. If you have a floppy, you can go find your floppy using this button here. 
You can go find your floppy disk, okay? And you can pick your floppy disk and boot it. It's awesome. Here's a CD-ROM. If you have a C like if you have Amiga OS, I don't know, 3.2 on a CD image, you can do it here. This little thing that looks like a hard drive, you can do that. Look at this, it already says Amiga HDF, yeah. I've already created an HDF. How did I do that? Well, what you can do is over here, what does this say? ADF creator, that's a floppy disk creator, or HDF creator, that's a hard drive creator. Yes, you can create your hard drive with this tool. Look at this, you can specify how big it is, where it's gonna be, what its name is, you can specify what it's gonna do. I honestly just leave it as a regular old single partition hard drive. I don't, I don't do RDB because I'm not gonna, when I'm emulating, I'm not going to take this over to a real Amiga. So I just kind of leave it as a regular hard disk file. You can hit create, done, boom. Yeah, awesome. There it is. And this little thing that looks like a RAM chip. Guess what? Yeah, this is where your ROMs are. Now, because back here I picked A1200, it automatically picked the A1200 47111 ROM. No, Q, it didn't. See how this says custom? So back here, you picked A1200, 3.1 ROM. So it's gonna use the 3.1 ROM that comes with the Amiga 1200. Actually, you know what? I kind of think the Amiga 1200 came with a 3.0 ROM, didn't it? I could be wrong. Maybe leave a message in the comments below. I don't know. But anyway, over here, because we're working with one of my presets that I've already done, go back to ROM, I set it to custom, not the default, custom. And I picked, of course, the latest current ROM for the Amiga 1200, which, you know, if you're an Amiga fan and you're keeping up with all the Amiga stuff, you know that they've actually been updating the ROM and the workbench. So that's why I picked that. And of course, there's so many other things you can play with here. Chip RAM, slow RAM, fast RAM, Zorro 3 fast memory. So here you go. When when you click this button here, Zorro 3 fast memory, you're basically inserting a card in the belly of the 1200. So remember, you know, you got your Amiga 1200, okay? When you flip it over, there's that expansion slot underneath. You're inserting a card into its belly when you activate this option. That's what this stuff is here. That's what all this is here, okay? There you go. Don't mess with the joystick. Don't mess with any of this. Look, you can do, you can, there's so much stuff you can do. Accelerator board, you can get crazy. You can do all kinds of wild stuff with emulation. And that's why emulation is so awesome. You can just go crazy and figure stuff out. Now, for CPU, yes. The current preset I'm using, <laughs> you're gonna see it's a 68030. It's not a 68020 EC 68020. It's a 68030. And I'm using floppy drive speed turbo. I don't have JIT enabled. No, I don't do that. But yes, I am modifying my 1200 basic install a little bit, but that's the joy of emulation. You can do whatever you want. You can change anything. You can have the Super Amiga. It's so great. I love, I love WinUEE. I love Amaberry, I love FSUE, which is what we're looking at right now. They're all based on the same thing. It's an awesome computer system from years and years ago. I love that we have the ability to emulate it so well. So we're, I don't know, let's just click start. Okay, we click start and it says, hey, yo, I can't find your ROM file. Oh no, I can't find my ROM file. Well, that's because it doesn't exist where I told it it was. So I right, go find it. Here we go. Let's go find it. Here we go, we got our A1200, 47.111 ROM. We'll click that, there we go, there it is. I'm gonna go ahead and click this little red thing which is saved, and let's click start, okay? So if you've watched the video, I haven't really done much, right? I just, I picked I picked the preset, you know, A1200, but I did change, I went over here and went A1200, but I, it, is, it, it, it will default to 3.1 ROM. Now, if you have the 3.1 ROM, that you have imported via importing your ROMs, wherever you have got them from, or through Mega Forever, you will have the ROM, right? But over here with a little memory chip thing, I'm doing a custom ROM, right? A1200 47 111. That's because that's 3.2. So there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and say start now. It should be okay. There it goes. It's gonna start up. And there we go. We have a nice, boring, generic. 3.2 install of Workbench. We, we even get the, the dreaded backdrop surround here. We have the backdrop image, OS 3.2. 
I'm not going to, I'm not going to diss them for that, but yeah, the whole, uh, you know, the whole backdrop thing here, that is, uh, eh, let's go ahead and turn that off. Okay. There we go. There we go. Look at that. So yeah, that's it. You're, you're now in, you're now running an Amiga on your Mac. So, I mean, you can, you can see it here. You're right. Mac OS. Here's Amiga. It's going, it's got the latest updates. It's awesome. We got 65 megs of fast memory, two megs of chip, 1.5 left because we are in, what screen mode are we in? We are in 64 color high res laced. That's how simple it is to run an Amiga on your Mac, right? Here you go, that's it. We didn't really do much. You do need to get those kickstart files though, okay? And obviously I've already installed Amiga OS 3.2. I skipped all that. The reason I skipped all that in this video is because I've done that video. Guys, gals, go back through my videos. I've done that video so many times. But I just wanted to show you once again how easy it is to get the Amiga up and running on Mac. And you can do Command Q to quit. There you go. It's quit. And you're back here to the main program. And yes, there's you can see all the little Amigas I've created over here. It's so simple, guys. FSUEE. It's so easy to use. It's got a really simple, friendly GUI. And the great thing is you can you can download this for uh, Windows as well. So you can run FSUEE on Windows and it's so simple to use with its little interface here. You can actually share, uh, if you have a Mac and a Windows computer, you can share the, in, the, the configuration files. So they both can read their own configuration files. You don't have to create different configs for Mac and PC. You can just load it up and say, Hey, I got Amiga 4000. It's like, okay, but I created this Amiga 4000 on my PC, my Windows PC. I don't care. You got the configuration here and it'll load it up. You can see, by the way, look, 4000 graphics card, Picasso 4. Yeah, yeah, it's the stuff, right? You know what, with this load, yeah. So the reason you're gonna see this error here is because I have actually moved a lot of things. Uh, and in this case, it's actually saying, it's looking for Dopus on floppy. Okay. Wow. Dopus on floppy. Why? Oh, so yeah. Media swap list. Again, I've made many videos on FSUE. You can load in the background. I called ghost load floppy disks. So you can preload a bunch of floppy disks in the uh, emulator here that you may want to use later. So I did that. I loaded Dopus is a, is a, it's kind of a ghost floppy in the background. I'm not, you, you, if you look up here, it says floppy drives. There's nothing here. Yeah, but I, I, I loaded it in the background. So it's it's hidden away, but you know, I'm not actually using it. So we're gonna go ahead and delete it and say start. Watch this, Mega 4000, here we go. What's gonna happen? I don't know. <laughs> HD not found, Amiga 3000 workbench. Oh, okay, well, there you go. So. It didn't find the hard drives that I had specified. You know why? Because as I said previously, I have moved them. I have moved all my hard drives. I haven't actually done Amiga on a Mac in a long time. So yeah, but look, you can see we actually booted. It actually did boot. I'll do Command Q to quit. So what's happened here is the, these files here, the hard drive files, these don't exist in the place that I specified. So I can't find them. That's why that failed. So... No big deal. I could just, you know, I could repath them and the, it will find them. But uh, yeah, that's uh, FSUEE in a nutshell. It's a uh, really versatile, simple to use, not overly complicated. WinUEE is awesome on, on, on Windows machines, but oh my gosh, it has so many freaking options and it deep dives. It's like totally under the hood. FSUEE is available on Mac and Windows and it's so much cleaner, it's simpler. Does it have deep dive options? Yes, if you click on this little guy over here, you can go into settings and you can get into all the nitty gritty deep dive stuff, but oh my gosh, I just ignore it all. I just do the basics. I love WinUEE, but FSUEE, uh, I'm sorry. It's just so much easier to use. It's so much easier to use. And on Mac, it's kind of like the only thing you can use on Mac native is what I'm saying. So uh, yeah, that's it. I guess uh, that's my little video here, trying to discuss emulation on Mac. If you're pissed off because I didn't go into a deep dive on how to use this, look, I've made a lot of videos on how to use FSUEE in Mac and in Windows. Go through my channel, look up the videos, you'll find them. 
This is just me kind of giving you all a refresher on what you can do and how this thing works. And by the way, it's the latest version, okay? So that's awesome. All right, I'm done with this video.